Welcome to the Nerds Podcast number 842. This episode brought to you by Loot Crate, uh, the quest for epic gear, housewares, collectibles. This holiday season is on. Loot Crate offers an, uh, a range of pop culture items for less than $20 a month. It's an amazing box of, of stuff just in time for the holidays. Uh, Revolution is the theme that's coming up. That's December's Rebellious Crate featuring exclusive items from Assassin's Creed, Mr. Robot, Firefly, uh, an exclusive Funko Pop figure, a monthly t-shirt, and a pin. Uh, it is... I. It's like Christmas 12 times a year. It's a great Christmas gift. And this all, is Christmas. It lasts all year. It lasts all year. But the, legitimately, the stuff that comes from the Christmas, like, oh, shit, I would have bought it. It's real cool stuff. I would have paid, paid $20 for just this shirt. They had a really cool uh, Rick and Morty shirt a couple, I'm, a couple I'm months a ago. I know. I'm as we speak. My it Rick was, and Morty Christmas sweater. It was a great sweater. shirt. Uh, but you have until the 19th at 9 p.m. to subscribe and receive that month's crate. And when the cutoff happens, that's it. To get 10% off any new subscription, go to lootcrate.com slash Nerdist and enter the promo code Nerdist. Uh, Katie Levine, uh, I feel like you're looking at me with the I have some Nerds Community Cork Board items that I would like to share with the public. I do. So the first one is comedian Billy Wayne Davis, who is absolutely hilarious, has a new album coming out from Third Man Records. It's called Billy Wayne Davis Live at Third Man Records because he recorded it live at Third Man Records. Uh, It comes out on vinyl this Friday, December 16th. To find out more info, visit thirdmanstore.com or follow Billy Wayne on Twitter at Billy Wayne Davis. I I also think I'm pretty sure it will come out like, you know, you can buy it digitally. Great. But Billy Wayne is great. Great. And then my second thing involves a story that happened to me this weekend, actually. I was out walking scout, and I found a squirrel on the base of a tree that was injured, and it was trying to move, and it couldn't. And so with the help of a neighbor uh, and my friend Michelle, we got it into a cat carrier, and I took it to uh, the California Wildlife Center that's out in Malibu. And they are they are tending to the squirrel, and Aww. they are going to try to save it and release it back into the wild. They do this. They've saved over 44,000 animals since they opened up. Uh, I think in the 90s they opened up. But they're a really great place. And I w- I'm very happy they were open. I'm happy I was able to bring the squirrel there. And if you, people can, uh, if people want to donate or find out more info or just help them out, you can go to cawildlife.org or you can find them on Twitter, Instagram. It's CA Wildlife or search California Wildlife Center on Facebook. Yeah, they have, uh, you, can, you can donate, you can sponsor animals. They have an Amazon wish list and it's really great. Why, it's a Christmas miracle. I, it was a really Really cute squirrel and scout was i mean she wanted to eat it but like she was also worried about it oh that's really nice you know yeah. you know yeah. i feel like scout just wants to eat a squirrel that has a fair chance when i got it into the cat the cat carrier and then i was like bringing it with us she just kept looking at me like really you actually got me a squirrel and i was like no scout i'm saving this squirrel's <laughs> life <laughs> i was like i'm saving the squirrel's life scout it's not for you this episode is uh she and him which is zoe Deschanel and m ward and uh you know we thought it'd be nice to do like a little uh little christmas yeah and so we went over to sir which is where we do all of our musical podcasts they're, they're very cool to us over there they gave you know we had a record they gave us a a, a, re- a practice studio and uh, and then they record the they record the music part for us and so she and him did uh, a few Christmas songs yeah that'd be nice for the holidays you yes. know as we're gearing into the holidays just to take a minute and remember you know as 2016 was the uh, the year of no chill as it was pointed out <laughs> to me uh, on the internet uh, that this uh, this seemed like a nice way like okay now it's the holidays we can sort of put all that behind us get ready for 2017 there's a hostful podcast episode coming up soon already recorded so these are not empty promises <laughs> and uh, and uh, got the sister wives together and so uh, yeah so we ended up being like nice and we had a nice little chat about Christmassy stuff and uh, they played a few Christmas songs that were very lovely so she and him is promoting their Christmas album called Christmas Party is available now so get it and turn it on listen to it get into the holiday it's spirit perfect you for guys. your holiday party I'm more excited about Christmas this year I think than I have been in a really long time and How I think it, I think it's just because it's been you know it's been an incredibly busy year yeah. it's also been you know there been a lot of a lot of things in the world that have been uh, sort of rough I feel like social media has been toxic this past year and I've had a weird relationship with it and I'm coming back around and I, I just kind of feel like I'm excited for the holidays to sort of get together and focus on being thankful and celebrating and ha- and being married and yeah. and, ha- and sort of starting that tradition and and so uh, yeah, you guys got to do a cool Christmas tradition every year now. Um, well, yeah, I don't know what that tradition's going to be. It could be a different the- tradition every year. 
Lydia set up the so Lydia set up the tree, made a Halloween tree, and then the Halloween tree just spilled in and yeah. just became like morphed into the Christmas tree. But uh, yeah, I like we'll, we'll that though. Something. Halloween we'll come tree. Up with something. Cool. Yeah, we'll do it. But anyway. Uh, so here's a little Christmas music episode. Uh, we'll, 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 we gab for a little bit, and then there's some Christmas songs. And uh, this episode is also brought to you by Stamps.com. The frenetic holiday season is almost – it is upon us, but it's almost over. But you still have to get all your Christmas junk out. Uh, the post office is going to be packed. Use Stamps.com. Avoid the hassle. Uh, everything you do at the post office, you can do right from your desk. You can buy and print official U.S. postage. Uh, you can use your own computer and printer. You can print any letter or package the instant you need it, and the mail carrier picks it up. And you should also give your mail carrier something for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice even, little gift card. A little gift card. And so I heavily uh, recommend that you use stamps.com. Again, anything you can do at the post office, except you can do this in your underwear. You can't go to the <laughs> post office in your underwear. They'll arrest you. You could be, you could be naked from the waist down. And print a, and and you cannot do that at the post office. No, they would arrest you. So sign up right now. Stamps.com. Use the promo code NERDIST. Four-week trial, $110 bonus offer, including postage and a digital scale. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. Click the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in NERDIST. That's Stamps.com. Enter the promo code NERDIST. Katie Levine is going to start the thing, and the thing being episode number 842 of the NERDIST podcast. She and him. Now entering NERDIST.com. the podcast this is the official beginning of the podcast <laughs> you guys played first yeah um because your band was and i, and I want to say i want to commend you for bringing a band some people just say hey i'll just roll with a guitar and that's fine not us but we you guys do that too but had the you whole know band but we were here we had we had a little um r- recording yesterday so we had our sweet sweet band here you know it sounded it's it, I, and I said when you were recording when you were playing that this officially like yanked me into the Christmas spirit good because it's not I feel like I get crusty about it every year because there's something commercial that's pulling me in yeah. and not something that just feels celebratory that's pulling me in so I actually thank you for thank you for ushering me into the Christmas spirit you're welcome it's our pleasure <laughs> I was gonna say wait till you hear our version of Malikaliki Maka that's that's no. really going to pull. Is that on the album? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. What is the guitar? What is, d- does that guitar uh, tone have a specific name? It's that sort of like 50s enchantment under the sea dance tone. Is that just like a Les Paul tone or what is that? Silver tone, I would say. It's this kind of guitar I have that I'm playing now anyway. Um, it's um, um, probably a byproduct of not using too many pedals and um, – yeah, Silvertone through a Fender amp is what we'll be using today. It sounds so nice. Thanks. It it's so Christmassy. Nice. Thanks. It does feel Christmas. Are you excited about Christmas? Yeah, I like Christmas. I'm excited about I like the holidays in general. What's your favorite part of Christmas? I feel like this could dovetail nicely into a Christmas chat. Let's just get everyone super fucking Christmassy right now on this, yes. on this podcast. Okay. So what is your favorite Christmas thing? What do you enjoy the most about Christmas? I like being together with family and um, it's, it's weird. Cause when, you know, when you're a kid, you're think you always think it's about presents, right. but you don't realize that underneath it, you've actually been building this, like this tradition that actually sort of brings you together with your family and your friends and, you know, or whoever you call your family. Sure. Do you did you carry any traditions over from when you was there anything that your family did when you were a kid where you're like this is dumb why do we have to do this and now you're an adult you totally you do it with have your family to do it yeah. um I don't know there was like oh this is not exactly an answer to your question but there was this always this thing where my dad likes everything plain and we like to decorate the tree and my dad <laughs> always wants it plain so he would wait to let us decorate it and we'd be like come on come on and now I like playing Christmas trees. <laughs> like, what the hell? Was there a reason behind that? He just didn't want it He's messy? He's like a Quaker. Oh, it's gotcha, kind of gotcha. like <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. sure. Plain. Didn't want to get shunned. Less is more. <laughs> yeah, like the beauty of the tree. If you're sure. bringing a tree in your house, might as well like let them shine 
on their own for a little bit before you start gilding it. I guess I see that. <laughs> then you could just go look at it outside and be like, there it is. Now bring yeah. it in and dress yeah. it up while it slowly yeah. dies in our living room. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are a lot of ways to look at it. But I, I like a plain Christmas tree or I like a kind of like well-decorated, tastefully decorated Christmas tree. When right. I was a kid, I just wanted to put as much crap on the tree as possible. You know, as many ornaments as right. would possibly fit on the tree without pulling it down. I subscribe to that. <laughs> I subscribe to that. Even stuff, even putting stuff behind the tree, we're like, no one's going to see this. This is up against the wall. I'm like, But I know it's yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, well, you don't want to let that side be bare. That's like <laughs> no. so sad. <laughs> that was yeah. You want to think that if you had to like twist the tree like a like a top that it would That's right. That there wouldn't be a bear patch. There wouldn't be a bear patch, yeah. There wouldn't be some someone waxed the ornaments yeah. off the back mm-hmm. and it's just <laughs> it's just all bare. Very sad. <laughs> what about you, man? What's your what's your favorite part of the holiday? Um, you know, I agree with Zoe. It's like family and friends is the best part. Music is a big part of a it. Music, yeah. That time of the year where um, you know, if you have a good um, radio station, you can actually find great Christmas music. Yeah. I love how um, I live in Portland, so it gets really dark for months at a time, and it gets a little bit brighter. It's like something to look forward to. So part of it is the anticipation, I think, of it, and it's so dark in Portland. <laughs> We're putting up lights. and um, Yeah, the Christmas lights are Even nice. like the, you know, the lame malls or whatever are putting up lights, and it brings a little bit of light into people's lives. Yeah. I've spent Definitely. a few holidays in Portland. I like Portland a lot. Portland, I love Great. Portland. I've, I have too. My place. grandparents lived there before yeah. they passed away, so we spent a lot of a lot of holidays up there. We're <clears throat> we're we we are uh, craving vitamin D in life. As much as we can. <laughs> so, but I feel like the weather is a bit. I mean, Seattle feels a little oppressive to me weather-wise. Um, Portland, I feel like, is not quite as severe. You're going to get so much hate mail from Seattle now. <laughs> but they're going to have to fucking, you know why I hate mail? They're mad because of their shitty weather. <laughs> That's why <laughs> they're cranky because of their weather. They know it. <laughs> they know it's true. But I feel like Portland, is there like a Seattle-Portland thing? Uh, rivalry? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Not for me. Not in, not under my roof, but um, in sports when the Sonics <laughs> were around, I think it was stronger. Supersonics. I like it gone. though. I like, I like. I think Seattle's a nice town, I but love Portland. Seattle. Portland to mm-hmm. me is just because Seattle is very. Um, Seattle's very metropolitan, and Portland still feels like it's a little unspoiled. I mean, I know that there are Nikes. I know there are corporations there, but in general, there's a lot of mom and pop stuff there. Yeah, and it hasn't really been. It's still a little bit more homegrown, right? I mean, in fifteen, twenty years, it might be different, but it's still a little bit more homegrown. I think. Right. I mean, some of the. There is like an Ace Hotel there. I mean, if there there are there are parts where you're like, yeah, your hipsters show it, you know, like you can right. see it a little bit. But in general, it's I feel like ma- that was one of the first Ace Hotels. Yeah. Oh, was it really? Yeah, I think so. One of the first ones I ever knew of because it was way before the New York one. I knew that Ace Hotel was there because it has a the good coffee. It's a good hotel. It has the Stump Town. Stump Town. Coffee. Yeah. What are the good? Well, that's the only thing though is that Portland, you you have to be charmed by like the coffee snobbery. Because no, it's coffee and donuts wherever. And by the way, Blue Star is the best. I mean, I oh, just yeah. want to throw that out Blue there. Blue Star is great. But is that I feel a donut like, place? Oh, it's the best. And they put one in Venice here. Oh, they put I, a, I don't eat a lot of sweets, but uh, that sounds good. It's really good. It's like <laughs> a real confectioner's, baker's, mm. donut shop. Nice. Um, but Experimental flavors, right? Yeah. It's not as like... It's not as wacky as Voodoo, which is good, but Voodoo feels like a 10-year-old inherited a lot of money and was like, I want to open a donut shop, and I put cereal on this one right, and right. bacon. You know, it's like whatever's in the kitchen, they're just throwing on a donut. And that, that has its place, too. It's definitely delightful. But, the, but I feel like I do have this kind of weird relationship with Portland where I feel like the locals really want to let you know you're a tourist. Like they really enjoy letting you know that you're a tourist. And I want to be like, Hey, just, you know, let me in a little bit. We're on the same side here. You know, like (laughs) you might've been a tourist at one point. Come on. What do you think that, what do you think that slight cultural elitism is about? Man, where does it come from? It's a great question. (laughs) I think it's uh, well, instead of a rivalry against Seattle, I feel it's a stronger one against California. Sure. I'm from California and I live there, Mm. but that is like, you can feel that on a, on a, you know, mm-hmm. reading the newspaper every day or whatever. There's just I, like this fear of 
Portland turning into the next San Francisco or like dot com city. You know I, what I feel mean? like everyone has a rivalry with California that California is not aware of. I think everyone has a rivalry with Los Angeles yeah. that Los Angeles. Yes. I feel like that that's the epicenter, but <laughs> right. like then people kind of like will kind of sometimes like rope San Francisco, right. you know, into it. But 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 then San Francisco has it toward L.A. But then L.A. is like this like totally unaware god. Yeah, it it is. totally doesn't even know that nobody likes just, him. That's because that's because L.A. is just thinking about I'm itself. Chill, man. Right. I'm chill. <laughs> the weather's good here. Yeah, come on, you guys. You know yeah. your problem, San Francisco, is it's cold in the summer. Maybe if it were warmer. It was a little bit warm. Sometimes I have to bring my sweater there. Yeah, come on, let's hang out, San Francisco. I can't wear my sandals. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever gives San Diego shit. Yeah. Let's let's fucking let's pile some of that LA hate on we the We can do that right now. Yeah. Well, I, I love like San Diego. Diego. That's <laughs> really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say nice. like nothing there's nothing to complain about with any of these places. They're all really nice. The weather really does <laughs> affect your I, I, Pat Oswalt said once when people say LA, people say LA's a beautiful city, he's he noted and I think rightfully so. It's like no one's look, they're, you're not looking at the buildings, you're looking at the sky. It's just yeah. when you say it's pretty, it's like you know, L.A. is actually kind of an ugly city. You know, there's not a lot of... There's not all that beautiful architecture. <laughs> a lot of it just got mowed <laughs> down other, as yeah. the city tried to build as fast as possible. And everyone's like, let's just build to the absolute edge of our lot. <laughs> no yard. <Yeah. laughs> and as high as it, as it, the air rights will allow Yellow us. stucco? Fuck yeah, yellow stucco. <laughs> let's make it as bleak and yellow and brown yeah. as possible. We have to build this up fast. There are beautiful areas. And yeah. I mean, L.A. is wonderful. So it's like, but downtown L.A. has a lot of amazing stuff. And there's like a lot of areas that are beautiful, and then there are areas that are, you know, less In transition. beautiful. To me, beautiful it's all beautiful because I'm from here and sure. I love it. Sure. But, um, but you know, they're definitely it's definitely like diverse terrain. You're gonna definitely drive through some some pretty places and less. Pretty. I mean, downtown is. I I've lived in LA since 1988, and downtown is just that area that's always like. How about now? Do you like me now? Yeah. Oh, we, oh, I just oh, look at these yeah. lot. Oh, how about how about now? Look what we just made this art walk, huh? Right. Downtown, you know. But I don't feel like it's a place that people. I mean, no one that I know ever goes. You know what we should do? Let's go downtown. I actually do. I actually like it because you could go downtown and there's there's like Oliveira Street. Oh, there's, there's amazing Chinatown stuff and Little Tokyo. There's a lot of cool. I a hundred percent agree. And the. And every time I'm down there, I'm like, it looks like New York here. It's, cool. <laughs> it's kind of New York-y. But- we shot downtown like for New York, yeah. like on my show a few weeks ago. And I was like, oh, my God, it's so cool. Don't here. tell New York that, boy. They're going to be really mad because well, they no, hate LA. I, no, I love New York. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. LA loves everyone. Yeah. But not everyone loves LA. I'd say most fact, people don't most love people LA. Most people hate LA. Yeah. And, you're ta- and, and people have this bizarre... <laughs> Uh, perception of the city, like you know, when I'm from the south and I'd go home, people were like, oh, it must be pretty fucked up there, huh? LA, pretty shitty. Yeah. Like, well, it's like any city. <laughs> there are horrible parts, and you don't go there, and there are nice parts. Like you, you know, yeah. It's not fun- like Memphis is so rad all all across <laughs> the the board. Well, I think people are always like, oh, LA, it's so shallow. People are so shallow. I'm like, um, like. How many millions of people live here? Well, like, also, that's definitely an, not a blanket statement. That's an inherently shallow <laughs> statement to make. Like, you yes. don't know mm-hmm. what you don't. Have you Do ever you been know, there? No. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, I just like to comment on things I don't have experience. It was a big deal. I don't care. I don't care. Like, the less people know, the more they claim to know. Well, yes. I met this guy once and he was a douchebag. So, all, <laughs> all 12 million people must be like <laughs> that guy. But Portland really does feel – I think part of the problem with L.A. is that it's a million different things all strung together by traffic. And Portland is, is a community. Like Portland really feels like a community. We're trying. Yeah, we're holding on. Yeah. We'll see what happens. What's but, your favorite part of town? Um, I like probably where I live, which is just called Northeast Portland. Yeah. It's still like um, um, houses. It's like holding on with both hands to it's kind of – um roots a little bit sure um there's areas in you know the rest of portland that are just it's similar to la just wipe it out and start a brand new construction or skyscraper as tall as you can but i feel like northeast is holding on to like let's not destroy this perfectly fine building let's just renovate what we have so anyway i really wish i had 
bought a house there a few years ago because they were really – there are these great – as you know, these great Victorian houses, these Victorian-style houses. You know, And a few years ago, they were like – cheap. Three hundred thousand dollars for like a three bedroom house, right. and, you know, and I feel like that's probably those days are gone. I feel like that's yeah. probably inching up uh, quite a bit, but it's a uh, it's a lovely place to spend to spend some time. I love it. I love I love LA equally. I'm from here, and but um, I get to spend a good yeah. amount of time in both cities, so it's it's a good. What made good you decide life. to lo- relocate up there? I started recording up there actually uh, in two thousand and. I was living in Seattle at the time, and I loved Portland more than Seattle, and just started spending more time down there. Moved there. What are the What are the good venues in Portland? There's a new one called Revolution Hall that I really like um, uh, for classical music. There's a really beautiful place called the Schnitzer, and um, maybe we played there. I feel like I feel like when you a long played time with Nora. ago. Yeah, Joan, I, I came up and sang a song. That's right. With you, but that's a beautiful venue. How do you have time to, for to do this when you have <laughs> a show and a toddler? And I mean, like, how do you how do you make time for music and touring? Well, I don't. We don't tour a ton. We haven't been out on the road in a little bit. We do TV show tours. Yes, we do TV <laughs> show tours. But um, I, you know, it's really important to me, and um, I love doing it. And it, it's a totally different, like, creative process for me. And so it's like, you know, breaks up the monotony of you know doing a television show for a long time, which is great. It's just you know. It's a lot of hours spent, you know, on a set, you know, with a group of people. And it's as, you know, kind of rewarding as that is. It's so nice to have another outlet. And it's like our, you know, Matt and my collaboration is always like, it's a, it's a real like kind of tight knit group of people really that are collaborating. It's like Matt and me and then, you know, whoever's playing on the record and engineer and you know, mixing engineer, it's kind of not, um, it's not a huge collaboration with like a hundred something people, sure. which like doing a movie or a TV show is, you know, and you have a lot less kind of control over it. This is, this is a lot more, you know, kind of our own little committee of two. Exactly. Yeah. Do you ever fantasize about like, Oh, it'd be great to just tour all the time. Like, would you want to just tour no, all the time? I like to record all the time. Recording. I like can do endlessly, but Touring Touring's gets, bad for your brain if you do it too much. Yeah, touring can be um, <clears throat> really tiring. Exhausting I, too, yeah. Yeah, because there was one year where we toured like almost 10 months, and I was like, by the end, I remember being like, uh, like, I'd get sick. I kept getting like some kind of like weird motion sickness <laughs> on the bus, and I was just like, you know, it just – Playing a show when you don't feel well, which inevitably, if you tour for a long time, you will have to. It's just weird because it's like everybody's Friday night, but for you, it's <laughs> it's your like Monday, se- you know right. Monday night, and you're like you know all you want to do is go watch a movie. So, you know, I love touring, but I think you know it's like kind of more more of a limited thing. And Matt, you collaborate with a lot of different people. So is that – do you find that you enjoy the – just different flavors of chemistry that with different different types of people? You kind of slide in and collaborate and then slide in someone else, collaborate somewhere else? Yeah, I like being in, in the passenger seat just as much as being in the driver's seat. So that makes – um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's the only way I know how to work really because I'm um, – I get just as much from um, um, calling the shots as observing how people are um, writing and how they sing. And, um, you know, it's – so I love I love both sides. Do you ever just want to throw the guitar down and be like, this is my fucking band. You better listen to me because you seem very aggressive, Matt. <laughs> you seem – I'm, I'm like really... that is the last thing I could ever see happening. <laughs> well, it's, it's you never it, know. It's just such know. an interesting. It's 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 an it's interesting to have to be able to to ride both sides of the fence like that because it's you know most people either have one type of personality like ah, mm-hmm. I kind of like being the central figure or they would rather but 
being able to do both is really but kind of two different modes. I think just like knowing Matt and, and getting to work with Matt for so many years is like the, the collaborations then kind of like take on their own form. And, and since you are very collaborative, you know, as a producer, he's very collaborative. Um, so when he's like in the driver's seat, he's like, so passengers, like, what should I make? You know, like, let's, all talk about whether we make a left or a right you know so so i think that 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 it's like you allow the people that you're working with and then your chemistry together to like make you know to shape these things and i think that that's like you know so everybody you work with it's going to be like a different beautiful thing you know and so i think i think um I think if you are very collaborative, then working, you know, with different people and, and exploring what happens when you work with those people that, you know, that you like, obviously, um, that's, that's going to be re- very rewarding. If you weren't a collaborative person, then, you know, maybe it'd be a different story. If you were that guy who threw his guitar down. <laughs> I did kind of want to see you guys smash the guitars after Christmas memories. I thought yeah. that would have been really fun. <laughs> that would have been Just cool. the last it chord rings sad out. that <gasps> they smash so many guitars. <laughs> <laughs> well, just don't smash good ones, you yeah, know? Just, but then you have, that means you have to play shitty guitars. I guess that's true. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to a guy last night who's, um, he's a, like a master pianist and he plays with a, quartet sometimes or he'll do chamber music and he said he said oh one time he really he, he tried this where they like they smash the violins like they just had oh. cheap violins they smash the violins and he was like yeah it didn't the audience was a little thrown by it. Yeah. <laughs> you know in your head you think well this is gonna be amazing like who smashes violins yeah. like what a great you know but it just doesn't i just want to see a nice christmas band just trash everything yeah. by the end <laughs> great idea just a complete dichotomy yeah, to the everything else i mean i i don't know yeah. i I do love the holidays. I, I do. I feel like I have to mash the stress down. They're just, just dumb stress that I put on myself. Like, I hope everyone likes the gifts I get them. I have to mm. figure out who's going to get what. How do you, you know, yeah, that's is everyone going to be happy? Is everyone feel like you're paying attention to them in the holidays? Do you feel like you're, I mean, it, I, I don't want to fall into that trap when you get older and then all of the logistics of the holiday Take kind over, of ruin yeah. it, and you're like, oh, yeah, God, I gotta wrap a present, right. and then I gotta yeah. be so I gotta go to another thing. You know, it's just all the dumb things that you should never stress about. That I feel get like stressful. when there are kids involved, though, it kind of like revives all your like, because you're like, oh my gosh, because like I have a 15 month old, and Matt has a three year old. Is he three. almost four no, though? Right? Yeah. Matt has a, a a little guy, and and it's like when you have a kid, they're like all excited about stuff and it kind of it you just relive that that kind of innocence and and excitement through them yeah when you're when you're younger and you sort of make fun of your friends like oh, my parents want to do all this dumb stuff or they're just like give me the presents and then when you start understanding oh yeah because they're reinvigorated by this right. idea of the holiday <laughs> i guess you just have to give into it i don't know we don't have we don't have kids yet but we do my wife got the uh we have a we have a fake tree and she <laughs> pulled it out a couple of weeks ago and put all these Halloween ornaments on it and orange lights and put up Ooh, set up a, a Halloween like tree. Very so cool. the Halloween tree is just gonna it's just gonna morph into the Christmas tree. Nice. So we're already like we're so, ready. But you don't want a real Christmas tree? Well, it, part of the it, part of the issue is um it's just easier to have a that's true. And the tree looks really good. But does it smell like fresh pine? Well, no. <laughs> but that's what candles are for. That's what Pottery Barn is for. We'll just get the fucking, <laughs> the, you know, like the, the air freshener. Right, and you can get a wreath, like a fresh wreath. We'll get a fresh wreath. Well, it's just, you know, I have, I have memories of dragging the tree out, you know, like January 2nd. Yeah. And it's like, oh, there's needles everywhere and it's dry and i gotta chop it up and then take it somewhere and like recycle it you had and to chop it up I, yeah I, one year i'd like i chopped a tree up to just because it was 
it was just too crazy right. to try to fit in a car. And, you know, so yeah, I, I chopped it all up and <laughs> did the whole thing, got a bunch of splinters. It's, like, it's almost like you're a murderer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I murdered a tree. <laughs> I mean, you really, when you think about what a Christmas tree is, you are basically imprisoning. <laughs> a tree yeah. Murder. Yeah. You're just, you're just murdering it. You're letting it slowly yeah. die. And, and then you're kind of mocking it by putting all these really great decorations. <laughs> and it's like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But it smells like fresh pine. It smells like fresh pine. <laughs> but it's almost like if you just like pulled a 92-year-old aunt that you have and put her in the, you know, in the middle of the living room and then just hung a bunch of stuff on her like, but she's got tinsel. Huh? <laughs> she's going to she's doing fine. So it is that that part of it's kind of funny, but I just think I we just the tree looks the same to us. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's nice to just have it in the house, be able to pull it out, yeah, be able to fold it back up fun. and put it back yeah. down. Where do you guys uh what do you do you go for like big bushy tree or do you like thin elegant tree what's your what's your what's your tree game oh you know like a charlie brown like <laughs> <laughs> you have to throw a blank a blanket around it just some twigs yeah, yeah no i like um i mean it depends it's like when you see the right one it calls to you sometimes i like the big fluffy ones but then sometimes those look kind of just like not as I know there's like what a Douglas fir and mm-hmm. like an evergreen or something. I can't remember the other one, but they're both. I know they all, always carry two types of uh, pine right. tree and and um, at the most Christmas tree lots. And Are you gonna spoil? I, I bounce back and forth. Are you gonna spoil the <clears throat> the kids this year? Do the kids get spoiled at Christmas? I mean, always. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember. What do you get a 15-month-old for Christmas? Like if they don't – if she doesn't really mm. understand just yet, it's just, oh, I, oh, I guess – The I'm, box is as exciting yeah. as the gift. That's – Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is cool. Mm-hmm. But she likes – you know, we try to get, get her like educational toys. Sure. And, you know, books and things like that. But she likes – she has like a little baby doll that she loves, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's so funny because you think like, like, oh, like – I don't know. I thought like a baby doll was kind of like something that you would like after you saw a commercial for a baby doll or something. Right. I don't know. As an adult, that's what I would think. But then she got a baby doll and when she was like 10 months old and she was like giggling and like <laughs> hugging it. And it's like you all of a sudden realize that there are these kind of just – instinctual things that when a baby sees like another baby (laughs) or a fake baby that they have like an instinct to love and hug it Uh she does it with her her stuffed animals too she loves animals she also does it with real dogs too she'll go up to like like a big dog and like try to hug it and i'm like oh maybe maybe i should do that a little fear (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well if one dog maybe you should just have the fake baby doll just growl at her once just to you know just to she see. doesn't get scared of that like even on halloween like we we went out trick-or-treating and like there was someone dressed in a really scary costume that i was scared of and she was like <laughs> and just like just like kind of reaching out like cool well-adjusted okay. baby <laughs> She's like, yeah. oh, she's old enough to sit down and go, why are you so cool? Why are you such a cool baby? How did you? <laughs> I think my husband has a really, like, cool personality, so maybe she has his personality. I don't know what <laughs> type of child. I mean, my wife wants kids. I, I just I have no prediction. I'm just ter- I don't. I'm, you can't know. That's yeah, I know. That's cool. I, I know, but I'm just terrified the kid's going to be into something that I don't understand, like sports or, you know, <laughs> and I'm going to have to be like, oh, yay, let us, I, let me help you foster this passion that you have right. that I don't understand. I kind of hope they just like everything I like and then that'll make it easier. Yeah. Does well, they you, probably will for a while. Well, I like a lot of childish things. <laughs> so I feel like that, I mean, I already have like toys and games and like I already, I'm all, I'm all set up. Just don't have the kid yet. Right. What about you, man? Um, I think, yeah, that's one of the greatest things about kids is they steer you in these directions that you had no idea that you would be getting into pumpkin patches. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Oh, the pumpkin um, patches. Corn so mazes. Fun. <laughs> Are there some good corn mazes in Portland? There's a few. Yeah. But yeah, you know, before kids, I've never really thought that would be, you know, a terrible way to spend the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have a kid, it's like a corn maze is the greatest. Thing. Well, this is this is actually instilling me with some uh, some it, excitement it, yeah, and it hope. Opens up your mind a little bit. Yeah, that's good that you can vicariously oh live through your child's joy of uh, yeah, experiencing ne- these things. I never wanted to go to a pumpkin patch before, and then I was like, 
Oh my yeah. God. It's I on the can't calendar. wait. Yeah, yeah. It's on the calendar. <laughs> There's a petting zoo there. It's just nothing cuter than watching like a little kid, like, like kind of goat. waddle through like a, a maze of pumpkins <laughs> and try to pick them up because they're like really heavy. It's so cute. I'm going to be so heartbroken if I, cause you know, we, we have annual passes at Disneyland and we go to Disneyland a bunch and I'm going to be so heartbroken if my kid's like, this is dumb. Like, you know, like, what There's are you talking There's no way. About? Yeah, they impossible. will love Disneyland. All right. I hope so. Not taking kids to Disneyland is, is like a mean thing. So. I know, but I'm just, I just have a feeling my kid's going to rebel by being some type of Alex P. Keaton type of character, <laughs> you know? That's Maybe just... when they're older, but right. when they're little, they're, oh gosh, it's like, They'll come grow. on, it's so They'll cute. Grow into- Teen Fox, right? Or like <laughs> they could. What else did Michael J. Fox do? Well, uh, Back to the Future. He Back could, to the yeah, Future. He could be yeah. McFly. His, his character sure. grew. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you yeah. mean Teen Wolf? Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. Which one? Teen is Fox that? also works. Teen <laughs> Fox is yeah. It has nothing to do with Michael <laughs> that's J. Fox. A, that's a new. <laughs> Teen Fox. That's a new movie I'd like to see. Teen Fox. Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox stars Teen in Teen Wolf. Fox. Teen Fox yeah. was Teen Wolf. Yeah. Scott Wolf plays Teen Fox. Right. It's just a little bit. It just reverses. <laughs> just reverse. I never got around to seeing Teen Wolf. Mm. So what? Oh, it's a classic '80s I movie. Seen it either. It, the funniest thing about that movie is that it became like a very dramatic MTV show. I don't know why they bothered to call it Teen Wolf. Oh, right. It had nothing to like Teen Wolf. The '80s Teen Wolf was just a dopey. Oh my God, he's got these. He's a wolf. You know, and they don't really explain it. They're just like, oh, you're, it skips a generation. Like, he doesn't get bitten by a wolf. There's no great werewolf. You know, he's walking late at night and then gets it's attacked. It's basically like a bit that gets extended for It's like a bit an that gets extended. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and of course, it had that classic 80s, like, well, there's a sporting thing that they have to conquer. So he's on the right. basketball team. You know, Michael Is J. There Fox. Is a, there a, like a, a wolf montage in it? Well, there's, there's a montage of, yes, there's a montage of him, like, he he be, he he turns into the wolf during a basketball game and no one seems phased by this in any any way uh no one hunts him no one's like we have to trap him and study his brain for science like they they're just like oh okay well one of these one of our students is a wolf now <laughs> and so he just gets super good at basketball cuz he's got wolf skills and uh because you know how wolves love to play basketball and so <laughs> and they're good at it yeah and so he uh there's just that's montages. why there's so many wolves in the that's, nba that's, that's just so many wolves that's just why they're like so many wolves in the that's nba so- like because they love it's one instinct that wolves have good at it, yeah it's like smell and yep. like hunting and, and basketball. basketball and three pointers yeah they're really good at they're really good at dunking on, yeah. a, on a on a motherfucker yeah they love to dunk <laughs> <laughs> so the montages are him like embracing the wolf and he's like oh he's he's van surfing and he's he's playing sports and he's hooking up with ladies because he's the wolf and, and no one no one seems bothered by this right. at all and then the the, sh- the tv show is more serious the tv show i guy i've ne- i've never actually seen an episode of the teen wolf mtv show but was it a cartoon no it's oh, a okay. it's a it's a broody teen like vampire diaries okay. but with werewolves i'll have to check it out yeah i I haven't seen it, but one of the guys from it was on my show. Yeah. That's all I know about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was about to tell you a story, and then I was like, oh, That's I all I know. The I did, there's actually nothing. But I saw posters for it, and it did look brute. It's brooding. super broody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, MTV is sort of programming for, like, 14-year-old girls. And right. so that's what their de- demo seems to be. So, right. you know, sexy, sexy teen wolves. <laughs> I don't know if they play basketball in the show. <laughs> I mean, they're not being true to wolves if they don't, <laughs> as we've established. <laughs> How could they leave out, out this essential tenet of wolves? Oh, they like, hate science. One of the things – they hate science. <laughs> <laughs> they might as well just they, have a, <laughs> might as well have a card at the top of every show. Like, first of all, we hate science. Second, we of hate all, science. We are ignoring that wolves are great at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> all wolves. <laughs> Carry on. Watch the show. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. We're just, we're just making this for you guys. Yeah, whatever. I mean, who wants it to be accurate or anything? You know, this is fake routine werewolf, teen werewolf show. Are you into any? Are you into any weird sci-fi or any fun um, stuff? No, other than Teen Fox, no. Other than Teen Fox, so. that's kind of the only one. I'm pitching Teen. I, I like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is fun. 
Do you watch Game of Thrones? No, I don't. Really I also watch like much Stranger TV. Things. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so good. So good. But yeah. you, you would like it. Yeah. Well, They're... I love Lord of the Rings. Does that count? Oh, I mean, yes. it does count. Yeah. Tolkien. But if you love Lord of the Rings, you will love Game of Thrones. No, I need. I need to check. You it out. really will. It's Lord of the it Rings is... with tits. <laughs> Do you like Lord of the Rings and tits? Then you'll love Game Basically. of Basically. <laughs> and a lot more violence. It's and a lot so, more so gruesome. Violent. But it's it is so violent. like similarly like engaging as, you know, just the stories are so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. Do you And it's, you know, fantasy. Wait, are you so are you super are you like super Portland? Do you like, well, I don't have a TV. I don't watch I TV. do have a okay, TV. Great. I watch the Trailblazers. I watch the Seattle Seahawks. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I watch like you know some news, but that's it. Okay, and New Girl, of course, of Obviously. course, and of course, of course. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's all the that's all the time. Tivo, yeah, Don, yeah. It's because I'm sure there are people. I'm sure there are people up in Portland who have like you know some old CRT TV screen from like the 50s. Like I only I only watch in black and white. And right. I don't watch cable. I just right. Watch. I've never met anyone like that, but the problem I'm sure there is. There must be people that are above TV. They're above TV. Yeah. They're not. But so they they've gone back retro. Yeah. Because they. I I feel like there's a cassette resurgence, and I don't understand the cassette resurgence because I think of <laughs> they all they don't sound good. <laughs> no, it's the worst. They degrade. Like it's the worst quality way to listen to music of anything. I would imagine. Yeah. I think vinyl's very worth it. Cassettes are like more of a novelty. Maybe that's just like a maybe that's a hipster thing. We're, like, look we're, what we're doing. We're waiting for the video cassette resurgence in Portland. VHS. <laughs> yeah, you should put out. Oh. That'd be really fun if you if you if you recorded some a set just for fun and just put it out on VHS and no n- nothing else. Oh, yeah. I don't That's even know if you could. Idea. I, I don't know if I don't know if that is remotely cost effective, but we did have a cassette for Volume Three. That's right. Which is kind of cool. Right. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. But we have not done not a video. A video. A VHS I mean, how hard yet. would it be? You could just I know. hook, you know. How just... about Betamax? I think Betamax. Poor Betamax. Betamax. Betamax was better was quality better than quality. VHS. Yeah. yeah but but... VHS like, it must have better marketing or something. What it was was that um, Sony had Betamax and they, they tried to corner the market. And so they didn't license the technology out to third parties. Oh. So uh, they wanted to own all of it. They wanted to own the platform and all the devices. They got greedy. They got very greedy. And yeah. VHS was like, hey, whoever wants to make a VHS, you know, Sanyo or can anyone yeah. can make their own. And so that's why it had the wide adoption rate because Sony was trying to corner that market and control all of the everything and all the pricing and everything right. so my dad was really into betamax because it was better quality and you like i remember when i was really little you go to the video store and they would be like they'd be like betamax or vhs mm-hmm. and they had like a little thing that said like orange was betamax and blue was vhs yep yep <sighs> what's your favorite christmas movie oh um Oh my gosh! Um, well, I love Meet Me in St. Louis, mm-hmm. which is like a Judy Garland. Never movie. seen it. Never it's seen the it. the debut of the song "Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas." Judy Garland sings it. It is a tear jerking moment. They're gonna move away from St. Louis, and um, and her like her love, who's the boy next door, lives there. And she sings, and her little sister is crying because they're moving away. I'm going to cry. No, well, it's be, it. well, yeah, every, every and time. And she sings, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Every Judy Garland song. I mean, makes you cry. Well, because, yes, because un, because just a millimeter below the surface is her the, story. the deepest the sadness. The most volatile yeah. human being. So you, you just hear, mm-hmm. you just hear all most of it. Most beautiful voice, most volatile. You can just person. feel it. Yes, yeah. Underneath. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, I don't know if you've seen it, but Elf is a real good Christmas movie. Oh, yeah. thanks. Uh, uh, and, uh, <laughs> Christmas Story is a good Christmas one. Story is great. Yeah. And I watch Scrooged every year. Oh, that's a good one. Scrooge yeah. totally holds really up. Really good one. Matt, what's your favorite Christmas movie? You know, all those ones that you guys mentioned. Um, anything Charlie Brown. Mm-hmm. I like. I'm, I'm oh, yeah. in um, Hook, Line, and Sinker. Yeah. They're, those are also It's very- a Wonderful Life is also a fantastic Christmas movie. Someone just said... Oh, if you watch that movie again and you imagine that I don't know where I don't know where I heard this, but if you imagine that he actually does die. Oh. And that whole like idealized version of his life is basically just this flash that he's seeing, you know, wow. like right right before he dies. Just kind of a fun way to ruin a great feel good yeah. holiday movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's like the when they said that Wizard of Oz had like a like one of the munchkins like hanging himself in the back. <laughs> <laughs> All these like weird rumors about of course. old movies because they you just see them so many times. Right, the monkeys beat each other to death <laughs> with those wings they made them wear. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just the, the filmmaking at that time, and I know it's horrible now, but we have enough distance that it's funny. All these people would be dead by now anyway. But the uh, but just the conditions that people worked under. It's like oh, they're you know they're putting makeup on your face that has horrible chemicals oh. in it or well, still the makeup a lot of times right the, the, you know oh we makeup, didn't fix all that <laughs> well the, the um the uh basically like the regulations from the fda on makeup hasn't been changed since 1936 so. oh great yeah it's so basically that movie was made in 39 so oh that's fantastic yeah. so we're basically just doing the same thing that they yeah. did i wonder what people will look back on our culture and go can you believe they put computers on their laps? What were they thinking? You well, know? yeah, because there's like a lot of, we don't really know like what <laughs> Wi-Fi does to our brains or anything. No. And we're just like, put it everywhere. I want to make sure there's Wi-Fi every, everywhere. They were killing themselves. Oh, in my baby's room. I want it in my room. Can we I just install it, it in the baby? I'd love the baby to be a hotspot. Can the baby just be a hotspot <laughs> wherever the baby crawls? Yeah. It's a little like antenna in that baby. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is weird. I'm sure there's. Well, the network is called Baby. It's just like <laughs> wherever just the baby down. crawls. <laughs> Ugh, I can't get a signal. Just go closer to the baby. <laughs> Does the baby's left arm seem larger than the? Ah, it's probably fine. Nothing. It's fine. Yeah, we're streaming Netflix. The, the baby's <laughs> come on. Really good hotspot. Game of Thrones. Are you watching Westworld at all? I haven't been. It's fun. Um, I have to like get into. I, I've been watching Mr. Robot. Yeah, which great I show. really like. Great show. I'm a little confused though. Like second season, it start. I I did the first season. It was great, and then second season, I've started to be like, I'm confused because I watch <laughs> it before bed too, and then it goes into my dreams. <laughs> but I I really like it. It's a great show. Yeah, it's a really it's a really good show. Yeah. But Matt only watches sports apparently. Matt, I mean, we I can't know. we can't I'm get Matt loser. on the pop culture no, train. No, no, no. I just I don't know anything about sports much really uh, no me neither i want to be able to bond with you on this and I be know. like yeah the Cavs this year boy they but i don't know no, anything. i most of my friends Trailblazers. you know they hate football and i completely understand why because the culture is just like terrible but i watched it with my dad growing up yeah I watched basketball with my dad growing up so it's all like i went to right baseball here. games with my dad growing up so i like baseball but i don't know a ton about basketball or I football think baseball's but really boring but that's yeah. Just me. No, well, it's so, wrong. I get it. It's it all about what have, you grew up it, enjoying. It would yeah. be to me if if I maybe. I mean, I don't know. Maybe if I hadn't grown up with it, it would be boring. But I think it's really fun. I wouldn't watch it. I don't watch it really. On but television. if you're going to the game, I love going to the game. Yeah, it's so much fun. And then you know, I actually enjoy going to you know games. Like if I was invited, you know, right but for any sport. Have you been to like any Laker games or? No, Clipper I've games? never been to a basketball game. Isn't I don't think I've ever been to. A, I don't know if I've been to a basketball game. I went to one bit. Ba- I threw out a pitch at a baseball game. Oh, that's fun. And that was that was terrifying and fun. Did you make it into the pitchers, into the uh, catchers? Man, okay. Here's why. Right. My mom is a rabid sports fan. Rabid watches everything. Oh, nice. Swears at the TV. She's she's a she's a nut job for sports. And when I told her I was throwing out the first pitch at a Dodgers game, it was the most excited I've ever heard her that's about great. anything that I've ever done. And you practiced. And she was like. You <laughs> she got sports mom like real fast. She was like, uh, b- "Next week, I'm we're gonna get a pitching coach from UCLA. You're That's gonna great. go down there." She goes, the, "The reason people fuck these things up is because they don't know. Sorry, my contacts went. They don't know uh, what it's like to be on the mound. We're gonna put you on the mound. Like it was just a glimpse into what my life would have been if I had shown an aptitude for sports. Right. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't. But uh, but you know, she was right. You know, I went." I went with the pitching coach, learned how to throw a ball, great. and and then I did not embarrass myself. Um, it wasn't amazing, but it wasn't embarrassing. So it was all yeah, it was all fine. It was all good. Did you play sports when you were growing Just up? Soccer and um, a little bit of like basketball, a little bit of like track, but that's it. I never like excelled at anything as far as like sports goes, but. Well, when you're a guitar god, you don't need to excel. <laughs> and you don't want to hurt your hands. Oh, yeah, no, you no, gotta, no. You got to protect like, your hands. You your hand with like a ball or something. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't need to do. You just sprain a finger. And then yeah. what, then yeah. what happens? F that. Yes, F that in the A, Matt. 
Well, high school, I wanted to pursue soccer a little bit, but yeah. I couldn't like that's a better compete. Sport, sure. So that's when I started playing yeah. guitar because you kick yeah. the ball. No hands. You're not supposed yeah. to use your exactly. hands. Yeah. I think you could just do one show where you're playing and then you're just like kicking the ball with both, you know, like soccer style. Yeah, we, or we oh, could five play minutes. Pass. We have five minutes. Yeah. yeah. We have five minutes. We have to make these last five oh minutes my God. really right. special. What are we going to do? Really count. Uh, <clears throat> let's let's maybe do a round of uh, okay. Christmas wishes. Okay. Speed, speed wishes. Speed. <laughs> <laughs> a speed round. So number one, Teen Fox. That's the first speed <laughs> wish. Get on in Hollywood. Come on, President of Hollywood, Teen Fox. Yeah. What's Scott I Wolf doing? I want to see a fox, but, a teen, but as a teenager. Yeah, he's a fox. Yeah. <laughs> where? where? Because Teen Wolf, he turns to the wolf and people are like, oh, fuck, what do we do? But Teen Fox, they're just like, what's happening? Aw. You know, like he's everyone's- a twenty. Century Teen Fox. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, so we have the theme song, so all we need now is Scott Wolf. Uh, all right. Peter Wolf. Peter Wolf could be Teen Fox. Peter Wolf could be Teen Fox, too. Uh, what do you think? What do you think? Christmas wish. A Christmas wish? Yeah. Um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 peace on Earth. Peace on Earth. All right. Uh, female president. Mm-hmm. Well, we're still. I week, wish for that. Yeah. We're still a week away from the <clears throat> from the. Yeah, by the time we're recording this, we don't know what the outcome is right, yet. Right, right, right. People are going to hear this after. Oh, after whatever. Change our wish. Or whatever. Well, I think <laughs> um, uh, wishing for peace on earth is That's and happiness universal. kind of will no, cover like, the other. Yeah, there's no expiration date for that. Yeah. Um, I should change mine if we're talking about. Yeah, if it's a wish after. We're pretending that it's yeah. December right now. Is that right? Or yeah. Pretend, okay. Oh, okay. Then, uh, so then you're going to have to cut that is. wish out because yeah. it's not going to make any sense. Right. Um, They're going to be like, that wish was already granted. Yeah. Well, no. And then they'll be like, he's so powerful. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Look what he manifested. <laughs> <laughs> or it'll be hilarious if it – well, actually, no, it won't be funny if that's not the case. But uh, what yeah. else? Um, how about um, – do you want a puppy? You know, um, you already I already a have a dog. Um, Rudy. Is that your puppy? Yeah, Rudy. Rudy right very now. good. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Peace on Earth is a good one. Do you have a cat? Um, Do goodwill you towards men. No, I don't have a cat, but I'm allergic. Sassy. I wish I what was not allergic to, to cats. That's, That's your Christmas That's wish. You wish you were not allergic. Yeah, Peace on Earth is boring. And it'll <laughs> never happen. But, <laughs> <laughs> but a cat. That's something you can really sink you. Not being allergic to cats is something you can really like. That's a real Christmas miracle, right there. Like, oh, I can breathe. I'm not. My eyes breathe. aren't watering. I can cuddle this cat, <laughs> and everything's fine. <laughs> no hives. Uh, I wish. I guess this is sort of branching off peace on, on Earth, but I just I wish people would examine, like, just not react on social media. I, I wish people would. Or in general. Give each other the benefit <laughs> of the doubt and say, <clears throat> I may feel angry at this thing, but maybe I don't have all yeah. the facts about it yet. So let me explore and try to understand. I want, I want understanding on Earth. I want people to strive for understanding but on But don't Earth. you think that, that the very nature of social media has kind of um, trained people to – be impulsive somewhat because it is such like an instant medium yes, and there and is no yeah and there is no like waiting time you know it's so right. and there there's less patience you know waiting for things it's always about immediate immediate immediate, immediate. Yeah. and that is valued in our culture and then maybe it's sending the wrong message to people in general yeah you know i it's part of the reason why like i i i slowed way down on social media just because i was like i don't I really feel like I need to think hard about every single thing I say because it's just there's no end to the uh, <laughs> to the the like sort of spectrum of reaction. And also, especially like if you're if you're a, if you're a comedy person and you are want to make just dumb jokes about things, you can't. A percentage of people are like, what's that supposed to mean? Yeah. Well, it means I, I, I don't know. If you make a joke or if you say anything in a negative form, even if it's like, I don't like papaya or something. Right. People are like, what? 
my mom grows papaya. Yeah. You killed her. She's a papaya. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> my mom's a papaya. Or if yeah. you say like, uh, fuck Seattle, Portland rules, like so, which Matt said at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> uh, and I was like, Matt, what about all those nice people in Seattle? And he was what like, the there heck? aren't any. <laughs> fuck them. Fuck them and fuck that, fuck that fish throwing, he said. We had to cut it out. Like Zoe and I were like super like, whoa, man, calm down. You know, Matt was, you know, Matt was very emotional about it in the beginning. But, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, peace between Seattle and Portland. Peace. Uh, peace on earth. And- you know, I wish for peace between California and all the other states. <laughs> Everywhere else. I wish for people to love California. Like they know they do. I feel like people just really secretly like California. And it's like kind of like jealous. when you have a crush yeah. on someone that yeah. you pretend to yeah. not yeah. like when you're, you know, 11 years sour old. Sour grapes. Yeah. Yeah. And sour They're just like, be- their weather's good. Good. And that ah. just reminds me, I want sour grapes to be a Kit Kat flavor, which I brought you guys Kit Kats from Japan. Oh, sour grapes. That's my I, that's my next the Christmas next, That's green tea. That's did you try the the cantaloupe flavor? No, I haven't tried it yet. I feel like I want to watch you try it. All right, well then, and then we'll let you guys go. Okay, I'll try cool. it. Um, this will be our swan I'll, song. I'll, I'll eat it off camera because <laughs> off camera. No, no, crunch, 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 crunch. All right, yeah, no, people <laughs> hate that. Okay. Oh, it kind of smells like. It smells like perfume, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Do you guys want? Oh, wait. Nope, it is. Nope. That was a real journey. Mm. I took a real journey with that. It tastes very similar to the strawberry. It tastes like hand soap. It tastes like fancy tastes hand, like hand soap, soap at your aunt's house. Cheap in the, hotel. In the guest bathroom. I'm, I, bath I'm in total agreement. Yeah, that's what it tastes like. I well, give it a... A C plus. Strawberry was better. New adventures, <laughs> Christmas holiday. Thank you so much for being here, and yeah, thank, thank you for you. playing. Now we're gonna play the. Now we're gonna play the songs that uh, that you guys uh, came to play, and uh, I really, really enjoyed having you guys here. And I hope you, you have a wonderful Christmas. Thanks. And um, uh, Christmas too. party is out. Christmas party is just out. Yeah, it's out. You can it's listen the to the album. It. You can get it. It's yeah. all the Christmas songs. Just quick rundown of some of the the, the track listing. Oh, let um, it snow. Malakaliki Maka. Um, Christmas memories. Um, Coldest night of the year. The chipmunks. Oh yeah, the chipmunk song. Did you do the chipmunk Christmas song? Yeah, but very in a very different way. All right. It's more uh, poignant. Winter Wonderland. Winter Wonderland. We do all I um, want for Christmas is you. The Mariah Carey song, which she won't let us play on television. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Fuck, why? <laughs> we have been barred from playing it on television. Why? Or making a video of it. I have no that idea. It doesn't make any sense. We have been trying to figure out. We were like, do we know anyone who knows Mariah Carey? Like, why is she blocking us from playing this Mariah song? Mariah Carey. Well, also, she would make more money she, off of it. Don't you want your song to be a holiday classic by having a lot of people cover it? Apparently, I mean- no. I don't. It's you need odd. to not be stingy at yeah. the Christmas ho- time of year, Mariah Carey. So, Mariah, if you're listening to the yeah. Nerdist podcast, you know she loves to. <laughs> you know she loves Nerdist. Yeah. Please let us know. Just we just want a reason. Just a reason. We just want to know why. And then you can be in Teen Fox. And then you can be <laughs> play the beautiful singer in Teen Fox. <laughs> she and him Christmas party playing on the Nerdist podcast. <laughs> As we transition right now. Here we are. Here's over there. Nah.
have a big fat back up on his back and lots of goodies for you and for me so leave a peppermint stick for old saint nick hanging on the christmas tree it's the holiday season so whoop de doo and dickory duck and don't forget to hang up your suckers just exactly Now leaving Nerdist.com. Enjoy your burrito. 